So from the last video, we set up the environment. We have our tile map set up, our two players, our collectibles, and some moving platforms. Now we're going to go through getting the players moving, getting the collectibles collecting, and getting these platforms moving. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add the solid behavior to our tile map so the players can stand on that. <clears throat> the moving platforms, I'm going to add the sign behavior to them for movement, but they also need to have a solid behavior for the player to stand on. So I'm going to go ahead and add the solid as well as the sign behavior for those. That way, each platform can do a different type of movement, either horizontal or vertical. All of these actually need to go vertical. So I want these going up and down. So I want to make sure that these are all these are all selected because you can select the parent object and it will select all the children and then do that at the same time. But then I want to make sure these are already independent of one another. So this one here is going to move a lot higher. And so each point on the grid is 70. And so if I want to move this, say, all the way down to here and then all the way up, I need to figure out how many boxes I'm going to be traveling in. That's going to be that magnitude. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, and five. So 70, seven times five is so 350. And the period is how fast. I want this to move rather slow. So I'm going to go up to eight on the movement. This one here, I'm going to go 140. I'm going to go two of those 140. And that's going to go a little bit slower. And this one here, I can go really slow. And I'm going to go ahead and do 210. Okay. Now, each of the players, they need the platform behavior. Whereas in the previous games, we included this scroll too. Because both players are going to be seen in the scene, we don't need to add that scroll to behavior because we don't want the viewport to follow either of the players but with each of the players using the platform behavior they're both going to use this default controls and we don't want that and so what we'll do is we'll keep it simple we'll use first player number one they're going to use the left side of the keyboard which will be the WASD keys and therefore those are not the default controls so for player one I'm going to take off the default controls Player two will use the arrow keys on the right hand side of the keyboard and it will use the default controls. And so by doing that, we also need to include the keyboard object. And then one new thing we're going to do is that we're going to have an event sheet per game and then one universal game uh, event sheet here. So this particular one here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to rename. And this will be our collecting game events. And I'm going to make an independent one here called the player events. And this way, I can put all the things that correspond to a player's, may say, movement or animation on this. And then on the collecting game events, which is what is making this game here in this event sheet work, is that I can right click and I can include an event sheet. And I want to, wrong one here, make sure that we're actually on the correct one. And I want to include those player events. That way, on the next type of game, I can keep that and transfer that on so I don't have to repeat my process. Or if I have specific events that are going to run on one specific layout, I want an event sheet that runs that one by itself. So on here, on the player events is that we're going to get that first player working. So I'm going to add an event on the keyboard and I'm going to go ahead and look for is key down. So the, so the A key for left, D key for right. And so I'm going to press the A key on the keyboard. 
I'm going to choose the D key. And then for jumping, jumping is using the W key, but we're going to do on key pressed instead of on key down. Because when you jump, you press the button once for the player to jump. And if you need to primp again, you press the button again. Okay, so we have A is down, D is down, and on W pressed. And so we're going to simulate the control. So back on player one is that under the platform settings, there is this simulate control. That's going to allow us to control the movement in that direction. So left for A. And then simulate control in the right for D. And then I want to simulate the control for the jump. So let's verify this. Go back to collecting game here. I'm going to go into a preview. So player one is using the A and D for movement. I can stand on those moving platforms. And then player two, it's also using its default controls as well. So now we have both players running independent of one another. Make sure you've saved your game. And now things that are going to be independent of this game are the players going to collect items on this game and not on the other. So that's going to be on this collecting game event. And actually, I'm going to move these. I accidentally put these on the wrong event sheet so I can select them all. I can do a control X to cut out. I can go to the player events, control V. And that way I can go back on here. And we can say player one is on collision with another object with the collectible. And then I want to destroy that collectible. And then if player two is on collision with another object, the collectible, that I will also destroy that collectible. Save my work back to our game. We're going to run and verify this. So player two, I can jump and I can collect the stars for player two. And player one can also collect the stars. Now I might need to fix the jumping a little bit. I might need to make the jumping speed a little bit faster. I also might want to enable double jump. Or I can leave it alone and let it be harder for the players to reach specific areas. And they're going to have to use the moving platforms to get to different areas. That might be a better way. Okay, so player movement is all set up. We've collected the collectibles. We've got the moving platforms set up. Now we're ready for the next step, which is to keep track of the scores. And we'll see you in the next video.